background and that would help you out. So hopefully this won't be too boring in the meantime while we uh, get a few more people online and uh, get ready to go. I'll tell you what, for those of you who have uh, shown up on time or even early, hi, nice to see you or nice to be seen, I guess, by you. It's been a little while, hasn't it? Uh, six months since uh, Friday, September 13th, last fall when uh, I did my last newscast at uh, CTV Edmonton. And uh, so what have I been doing in the meantime? Well, some projects around home, trying to figure out what I want to do when I grow up, all those kind of things. I'm seeing a few people uh, diving in here who are uh, self-isolating. Some friends who recently came back from uh, the United States where they have a, a place, so they're now home and hanging out at home and uh, staying away from everybody. A lot of the messages that we've been hearing seem to be getting through to most people. And obviously it's unfortunate that uh, for some people they're not. Uh, keeping their distance, giving an opportunity for uh, the health officials to try and get a handle on this pandemic. Uh, that hasn't been a problem for me. I pretty much hang out here at home anyway, so it actually works out pretty well. Self-isolation, or otherwise known as antisocial behavior, which is something I've been doing for a little while. Uh, what have I been doing since uh, I left CTV Edmonton? Uh, basically trying to figure out what I want to do when I grow up. That's uh, been a big part of it. Uh, also just trying to, to start off uh, a business. Uh, as a freelance MC, auctioneer, I became a certified auctioneer a little earlier on this year so that I could uh, have some credibility when doing live auctions at uh, charity events, that kind of thing. So that's what I've been working on. Then recently bought a bunch of uh, audio equipment so that I can do uh, some voicing here at home or some narrations or just play. Maybe I'll take my guitar and, uh, and a microphone and uh, put some songs together at the same time and force other people to, to listen. This uh, particular Facebook Live is supposed to be about finding the truth and uh, wading through the myriad of uh, information sources that are out there to try and figure out where is the best place to get credible information. Now, obviously on social media, we have access to so much more information than what uh, people had even 20 years ago. So there's an awful lot out there and you really do have to be careful about how to navigate through that. Uh, I am babbling a little bit just as I wait for a few more people to, to dive in online. What I really want is for this to be also interactive. So. Uh, hi, Kathy. Miss you too. Uh, so it's nice to have the opportunity uh, for you if you have some questions. And Des Malenka is uh, standing by with her uh, laptop and I have mine up here as well. So she'll send me any uh, questions that I'm unable to pick up off the screen as we're doing this uh, throughout this morning. And so I'd really like it to be as interactive as possible. Go ahead and you can ask me anything. It's, a, it's an open book. It's almost like a Reddit ask me anything uh, today. But I do have some things that I want to cover and uh, and look at as we try to find the information that we need on a regular basis. So uh, for me, it has been uh, six months of being checked out. I wrote a post on Facebook and then uh, to Daveville and Lloyd Lewis, uh, good enough to, to share it and give it to a, a wider audience, just talking about being completely checked out since leaving uh, the world of local news. Part of that was just that I needed to take a step back disconnect after being connected for so many years, 36 years I was in the news business. So it was nice to be able to step back a little bit and live in that blissful ignorance that uh, an awful lot of people seem to enjoy being in. And I, I really got a, a better understanding of why they want to do that. Uh, reality sucks sometimes. And so the reality of our world and the things and the issues that are facing us, it's, it, it's, it feels nice to sort of step back from that and get away from it all for a little while. That's a dangerous choice as well, because if you're disconnected and you don't have information available to you, you have no idea what's going on in, in your world. Decisions can be made and you won't even know that they may affect you until suddenly they affect you. So being connected and actually checking in is extremely important. Checking in and getting the correct information is also extremely important. Now, just as we get a few more of you signing on, I do want to say thank you to Des Malenka uh, and the Creative Hive for putting this series together and for giving me an opportunity to have a voice again and uh, to be able to talk to people for a little while. Nice to invite you into my home and Shadow being the uh, pushy fellow that he is, likes to be a uh, part of it as well. So. Uh, thank you guys very much for, for doing that. Thank you for Lloyd for, uh, for sharing it on Todayville. This all sort of came out of a post that I put on Facebook. It was called Lost in the Past Pandemic. It was at about 12.45 in the morning. I'd had a whiskey and I felt like talking a little bit. And so I wrote up this post just talking about being disconnected. But then when you get back into it again, how important it is to find credible sources. So that's where this all came from. And uh, I hope I can give you some reasonable information here uh, for a little while. Once again, if we can go interactive and you want to come back with any questions, I'd be more than happy to uh, to answer them as we get a little later on. So. Uh, 
where do I get my information now? Well, I get it from a lot of sources. I get it from, from Twitter. There's a Facebook feed that comes through, but as we all know that there are, there are some things that are worth reading about and worth watching and some that are worth questioning. I had a sign that was up on my computer for a lot of years and it said, question everything. That was always part of our job in the media to make sure that you got accurate information, question everything. Just because it comes from uh, one source doesn't mean that it's actually accurate. You have to double check, you have to see and make sure uh, through a couple of other sources that those are actual facts that we're, we're sharing. So that was very important for me to come back to mainstream media. When you hear that phrase, MSM, mainstream media, there are a lot of people who have a distrust of it, to believe it's a, it's a corporate-driven culture and that uh, news people are told what they can and what they cannot say, how they can cover a story, how they can go forward. I can tell you that in all my years, nobody ever told me how I had to cover a story because of a certain political bent or a certain bias. They would tell me how to tell a story because you needed to tell a story properly. They would tell you how to bring it to an audience properly. But never in my day did anybody tell me that I couldn't cover a story because of a political reason. So I throw that out the window. And as I say, I do go to mainstream media primarily for credible information. News people are covered by journalistic ethics. You have to make sure that you're doing the job for the best reasons, and that is to inform the public. And that's why I trust them. Keeping that in mind, everybody's human. Sometimes there are mistakes made, and the best way you can figure out whether you're getting accurate information is to look at everybody. So clearly I'm not employed by anyone anymore, so I'm not beholden to CTV or to Global or to Post Media or to CBC or any of the rest of them. So my advice primarily would be watch everything if you can. We're online, so we can actually pick and choose what we want to watch very easily. But there is no reason on earth you can't watch a story from CTV, then go watch the same story that was covered on Global, and you can see the difference in how it was reported or the angle it was taken or the questions or even how the story was put together, you will get more facts by expanding your view. Uh, your only loyalty really should be to the truth. It doesn't mean you don't have your favorite people who are on TV or your favorite reporters, but your only loyalty really should be to the truth. What is the actual story? And if you expand and you do that and you read the papers and you get, uh, a wide variety of angles on the same story, you should be able to get the truth. They're very good at it, and I know that uh, a lot of people in the news business have been working very hard trying to make sure that they're getting all that information. So they're working hard, and I think they deserve uh, some credit. You do feel put upon periodically uh, with how people uh, see you in media. So I'm not in it anymore, but to all of you who still are and are working very hard, I say congratulations. But again, you do need to question everything. Recognize that there could be uh, a different way of looking at it or even mistakes. And the nice thing about mainstream media that you don't get with uh, some of the more obscure sites in social media is if they screw up, they're going to admit it because they have to and they have to correct it because that's an ethical thing that they all do. Uh, so that's important to know as well. The ones that don't are the, usually the ones that are trying to spin you. Spin, it's an interesting thing. It can be uh, on any number of levels, even when, uh, say, government was sending us news releases, they would have a certain spin in how they wrote it. For example, if there was a new program, it wasn't, well, we're continuing to fund a program that we've always funded and we want to continue. It's, no, well, we've decided to invest in this. It's a spin to imply that, you know, they're doing great work. Well, doesn't mean that they're not, but recognize that there can be spin. On the social media sites, here's one of my favorites from this past week when you're looking at uh, real news or fake news. And keep in mind, it can be insidious. You constantly see these, uh, these, these posts that can come by, and even if you recognize that it's rather unlikely that that's true, it can, it can start a seed. So coming from a certain direction politically, depending on who you're following, but this stuff feeds through on Twitter and on Facebook, you will constantly get a barrage of, of a certain point of view. Now you discount it, you discount it, you discount it, but it is a slow, insidious thing that it can start to skew and maybe, make, well, maybe maybe this person who's on the far left or right has a point. So be aware of that. It's, it's, it's mass. It's the, it's the pure mass numbers of, uh, of these kind of things that are coming through that can start to skew public opinion. 
funniest one that I saw in the last week. And this, this was not a, a thing to, to skew. It was just the most ridiculous fake news one I've seen in a long time. Was uh, Vladimir Putin of uh, the Russian Federation has released hundreds of lions and tigers onto the streets in order to enforce a COVID-19 curfew. Ridiculous, right? There's a lot of people who bought into it. And then it went viral. Now, did they, they buy into it? Really? Or did they just think it was funny and it was worth sending out? Well, some people actually bought it, which is kind of worrisome. That one, you can look at that and go, okay, there's no way that that is true. It doesn't take very much to go and check a few sources and, uh, and see, what's, uh, see what other mainstream media are saying. If they're reporting it, it's one thing. Usually it comes up as a scam pretty quick. But that was the ridiculous one. Here's one that uh, is, is, is a good example of how you can find... Uh, those little moments where maybe you're being spun or maybe somebody is saying something that, that, that isn't accurate. So you may have heard that uh, with the, uh, the the pandemic, the lockdown in Italy, at Venice, suddenly the waters had cleared and there were fish and there were swans everywhere. The dolphins were swimming in the canals in Venice. There is an element of truth to that. If you go and look online and look at some of the other stories, you'll see that, yes, a reduction in tourist traffic, you know, fewer boats, all that kind of stuff had helped stop churning up the waters in Venice and they had actually cleared a little bit. The part that wasn't right was the part about the dolphins swimming up. There were no dolphins in the canals of, of Venice even though somebody put that in there. Now is that the most horrible story, fake news story you've ever heard in your life? Well no, a lot of people shared it because it was fun. Never let the facts get in the way of a good story, right? But it, it wasn't true. And so that's just an example of how portions of the truth can be used to then skew something off into an entirely different direction. You know what I mean? So you do have to watch on which sites you're looking at. If you see a story that you go, wow, that's that's fascinating. I can't believe that, that no one else has touched on that. Look around. Uh, you can Google it. Google it. Some, Googling it is a, is a marvelous tool to look and find other mainstream media or other media and see whether there's any correlation. But even then there can be relation, you know, related sites that may end up messing you up a little bit. So if you have any questions about that, by all means, you can just dive in and let me know and, uh, and I'll answer those questions for you if I can. So it can be a real uh, free-for-all on social media, can't it? When you're looking at uh, different things. Uh, next time you're on Twitter or next time you're on Facebook and you're going through and you're, you're seeing all these different posts, just try being critical for a little while, critical thinking and looking at what is on there and whether or not you think it might actually be true. Let's see, Bill Lawrence. A good lie always needs a small amount of truth. It is very true. Even back uh, in the days of the snake oil salespeople, so there'd be traveling caravans and someone was selling the latest, uh, the latest elixir to cure all your ails. They might have a tiny little bit of pseudoscience that they would throw in there, but then the rest of it is all spin and lie and it's a con and it's designed to get you to, to end up buying things. So yeah, uh, the, truth all, uh, the truth is always a sliver inside of a, a great lie. So you do have to be aware of that. I'm curious as to what you're watching. If you have an opportunity to, to punch it in, uh, tell me, hang on, but uh, Michaela, what do you say about those saying the media is hyping up the situation and making it out to be much worse than it actually is? The reason that gets in people's minds is because of the news cycle. So if you're watching in the morning, you're watching at noon, you're watching at six, you're watching at late night, and then the national newscast, this is such a huge story. Of course, it's going to be on all of those newscasts. So there is a flood of information about something that is exceptionally important right now. Does that mean that it's being hyped? No, it's, I think it's because it's being covered. It can get to be too much. I really do think there is, there is a line you can have between being informed and then being over-informed. There are a lot of people I've talked to who say they're on their computer all the time looking for any shred of, of information, any little extra bit of information. I really think that can be potentially dangerous because you get flooded with everything and it becomes very difficult to deal with. Um, so is it overly hyped? Um, I don't think so. Keep in mind, we also see a lot of stuff from the United States. I've always been very proud of the fact that media in Canada, even though some people might disagree, uh, media in Canada and media in the U.S. attack stories in very different ways. It's, uh, keep in mind, people here still want you to watch. So they're still going to do stories that they think will grab somebody's attention. 
it's a lot different in the US, but we still get inundated by all of that from the US and that style and sometimes the hype that can come with uh, that American style of, of doing news. So there is a danger of, of that hype bleeding in a little bit. Uh, for the most part, you, you are the ones you have to rely on. You can go to certain sources, but you have to decide how much information you can handle. Make sure that it's credible information. And that's why, again, I, I keep going back to the, to the mainstream media because they try more than anyone else out there to be accurate and to be credible and to do the job properly, right? Uh, so I don't know. I, hopefully that adds to your question, Michaela. Is, is there a bit of hype? I guess so, uh, in a way. But uh, the truth is, I put out a, a tweet on Twitter, this is two weeks ago, where I had gone to the, to, to the local grocery store and I was buying some stuff and, and a woman was coming by. Actually, I didn't say it was a woman at the time because I didn't want a gender profile or anything like that. But it was a person who came by and her cart was loaded with toilet paper. There were four massive uh, bundles of it. Now, we've all heard the, the story about the toilet paper lately, and so we certainly recognize that that has been fairly common. But that was two weeks ago, right? So the, the hype really hadn't started here all that much. Things have changed a lot in less than two weeks in Canada from, you know, play, watching hockey games to suddenly they're all gone. Uh, and all of our worlds have changed considerably. There was no real hype at the time. It was starting to come up, but people were already starting to panic buy a little bit. So a lot of people blame the media hype for perpetuating that kind of behavior. I, we were seeing it before, I think the hype really got uh, too intense. Let me just uh, see another one here. Finding my 13 year old is watching too much and worries. Uh, the kids are yeah, they're too young to process. Well, really, and I'm, I'm no psychologist, I'm no uh, uh, therapist or anything like that, but anytime you've heard from any of the experts, it's about having a conversation. And I would share with them, have, get informed. That's very important to know what's going on, but don't overdo it because then it just overwhelms people, I think. Uh, it becomes too intense, it becomes too much information, and then it's too easy for the misinformation to leak in. So once you move away from sort of the credible sources, you start looking for you know, the, everybody's favorite. This is what's happening, but the mainstream media won't touch it. Why? Well, usually because there's a pile of crap associated with it, or there's a shred of truth, and then the rest of it isn't there. Uh, so you really do have to be careful how much information. Make sure it's quality information, not just quantity of information. That's very, very important. Uh, well, follow me on Twitter. Interesting. Hi, Kathy. Thank you. Uh, so if any oh, questions from Des, she called herself the secretary. And I already got that one, so thank you very much for that. Shadow, you're not being entertaining very much. You're just sleeping like a great Dane normally does. Yeah, and I got that one too. So I've been able to see uh, some of those that are coming you through on the phone. So again, I'm not sure what you may have been looking for. I'm not going to give you specific sites on Twitter or through Facebook or different websites. That you have to go there. I would just argue primarily you can go to the mainstream media. If you do see some that are from a non-mainstream, somewhere you know that you're not familiar with it, really question where that is and try and do a little bit of research to make sure that that's actually accurate information and that's not just uh, some site that does like to put out fake news or or spun news because uh, the spin is really what uh, what gets you in trouble after a very short period of time. Uh, what else can we talk about? I talked about uh, a little bit about checking out, about uh, stepping back from it. So there, anything in moderation. So you hear that from, uh, from nutritionists, from uh, physical fitness people, everything should be in relative moderation so that you're not overwhelmed. Pick up on the, the main stories you want to see and uh, and then shut it down. I remember in so many different kinds of stories you would get lost in the amount of information that was coming coming through. So how can people help the mainstream media? You know what? Uh, I don't know that they really need that much help except get off their backs a little bit and just accept what they have. But still question it. Like I said, you, you still need to question everything that comes through, even if it is from a really credible source. That doesn't mean you look for all the mistakes or anything, but just question to make sure you're getting the full story uh, that you're looking for. Uh, what do you think about the social media posts from people in Italy or Spain sharing their experiences and warnings? I love those. 
And for the most part, uh, a lot of them are accurate. But you can still look at, you still have to take some of the grain of salt because as we've seen, there are some people who will go on social media and they will create a narrative that they think will go viral only because they want it to go viral. So it doesn't hurt to look at it and see who else is either retweeting that and see whether or not there's some credibility behind the retweets, if you know what I mean. If, if other people have gone and found some of these people, but you know, most of those stories I think are, are probably uh, pretty clear, but you still have to question them. You still have to look at them and you still have to try and figure out whether it's true or not. Uh, some of them are from doctors and then you can search and find out whether it's an actual doctor. Sometimes people are faking it, right? It, it, it's kind of irritating and it's a horrible world in, in some ways that you have to be so critical and so suspicious of some of the information that's coming through, but it really does guard you a little bit. So, you know, if somebody's coming up to your house and you've never seen them before, who are they? Why are they there? What are they doing? Are they scoping out? It's the same thing when you're on social media. You have to look at who they are, try to figure out why they're doing what they're doing and then move forward. But there can be some fascinating stories that are out there and, and eventually some of them will go viral once they've been double checked by, uh, by credible sources to make sure that it's an actual post or and it's not just a, a fake. Uh, so don't immediately accept, look at it, accept it for what it is at that point, but be aware that it could be a little bit skewed. But a lot of those have been very accurate. It's citizen journalism these days where people are in a situation and they tell their own story. And that can be extremely useful and it can certainly help people to understand, uh, you know, the scope of the situation, depending on what they're saying. If they're going completely off the board from what everyone else is saying, you really do have to, uh, you really do have to question that. that. That's a good flag to look for. Are they in the same zone or are they off in a completely different direction? Uh, give a shout out for the great job Dr. Hinshaw is doing. Everybody's been giving a shout out for the great job she's been doing. So in, in broadcasting, one of the things that people said that they liked about me was that I tried to stay level and I didn't try to get too high or too low. They were very emotional stories. Dr. Hanshaw is doing the same thing. She comes out and she's calm, she's credible, she's, she's well-spoken, and she gives you the information that you need. That's exactly what we need uh, right now at this time. It's not over the top, it's not undersold, it's just right in the wheelhouse. So. Well done, Dr. Hinshaw, that's awesome. What about the good news stories? How do they help us with coming together in these uncertain times? Any recommendations? Uh, there, you know what, there are tons of good news stories and a lot of them are coming from people who are getting together, not personally, but um, socially through our electronics. Those are the great stories. They're the people who are taking the advice and, and, and what we've been told to heart and they're living it. And that is sharing things with people. Uh, I like seeing some of the stories uh, where somebody is visiting an elderly uh, relative and, uh, and not going too close. Have I double checked all of those to make sure they're absolutely accurate? No. And that's the other thing. You, you, you can't be so vigilant that you, you disagree with everything. If, it, if it's a nice story and it makes you feel good about things and it inspires you to also do good things during this uh, ridiculous time that we're in, that's not a bad thing, I don't think. Uh, so you still question everything, but let's not get so cynical that we can't, we can't, uh, can't feel and can't emote anymore. Uh, I mentioned the question everything. However, in today's world of news by Twitter, it seems that even mainstream, uh, I'll have to wait until I see more, hang on. Can I get to all of it? Uh, it seems that even mainstream strives to be first rather than how is fact checking change? How is fact checking change? Fact checking should not have changed. It should. So there were a lot of instances when I worked at, at CTV where there were other sources, uh, usually through social media, that were going with information before we did. Was it because we didn't have the information? No, it's because we hadn't double checked it. We hadn't made sure that it was accurate. So that was six months ago. I'm not sure how much has changed. I haven't been in that room for, for an awful long time. I would think uh, that with some really solid people, both at CTV and at Global and at CBC and all the rest of them, they're still doing that due diligence. But yes, there is a pressure to get it on, get it first, expand on it, and that can be a dangerous thing. You, uh, you want to hope that those ethics, journalism ethics remain. And I know a lot of the people at all of the stations in town and I know that they try very hard to, to stick to that. So for the few times that they're going to be wrong, they will correct it. 
uh, and you may have seen corrections as, as they go. So uh, I don't worry about that too much. I worry about it a little bit, and so I pay attention and and you hope that they don't. But I do know that they're still they're still governed by those journalistic ethics, and they try. No one is perfect. Um, and you have to hope that the desire to get the hits on the website so you can get revenue up so you can still have people employed don't overwhelm everything. I will say that, uh, you know, it's the same uh, with media right across. It's not one station or another. There is, a, there, there is more work for the individuals to do than there used to be. Uh, that oversight is perhaps not as, as uh, intense, not as good as it used to be. There are fewer people doing a lot more. There's a potential for, for, for some things to fall through the cracks. It's not an intentional thing, I don't believe. Uh, yeah, okay, that's the one that I had. Does that give you some ideas as to where I'm coming from? Again, I didn't want to go through and try and find all of the different uh, websites that are best. I, I do think ideally you're better off with uh, uh, the mainstream medias and then do your own investigation on, on a lot of the other ones. What is in the media report on good stories? Why is the news we hear is always bad news or negative news? This thing, this part always drove us nuts. I get it. I totally get it. It, it always seems like the news is, is, is negative. And a lot of the time there, there are some pretty negative stories that can happen in, say, the first 10 minutes of the newscast because those are the, the big ones. But uh, if all you did was just do good news all the time, people start to get bored with that or disinterested because a few of them uh, can have an impact. If you overload it, it's it's almost like the same thing as doing too much bad news. But it's not always bad. Sometimes it's just serious, right? So it's a, it's about new regulations of the city or with the province or how this is impacting other people. Is this having a good impact or a bad impact? So it depends on sort of what you consider to be bad news, the serious, the hard news. Uh, but I know that having a good news story always made us happy to have a good story that we could add in there and put a few of them in there. So there will be a number. So, so again, watch critically as well, just because in the first eight to 10 minutes, it's overwhelming and keep in mind with the pandemic, of course it's overwhelming, but they're always looking for those good inspirational stories to add into it as well, I believe anyway. Uh, so uh, I understand the premise. I don't necessarily completely agree with it that it's, it's, it's all bad news and there's never any good news. We love to have the good news stories. Lord knows we needed to laugh every now and then or smile or have something touch our hearts. So those are good as well. They can get a little over the top sometimes as well, but that's just me being cynical. Uh, I hope that uh, I hope that answered your question. And, and keep in mind, just because I'm saying some things, you're going to disagree with them. I, I know that some people still don't trust mainstream media or a lot of others. They still want to try and find narratives that match their preconceived notions already. So I would just encourage everyone that despite your preconceived notions, look at everything. You know, if, if, if you're solid in your beliefs, then looking at other people's uh, opinions is not going to hurt you. It will help you to either solidify your beliefs or perhaps it might change them, or it just expands them and it gives them uh, something new and something more. Uh, what is on top of that? Oh yes, Des is feeling left out because I keep seeing all the uh, different questions on the screen and so she emails them to me. Uh, well, I hope you're just enjoying this anyway in the meantime. Uh, this has been interesting for me to just have an opportunity uh, to even talk to you guys again. It's, uh, it's been a little while, so uh, hopefully I'll see you again. What a great time to become a freelance MC and auctioneer. Uh, don't you think? So many events underway right now. Think of me when we come back again. So in the meantime, uh, I'm trying to do what a lot of other people are doing. We have this opportunity. You have to look at it as an opportunity, otherwise you'll just go crazy. So trying to learn new things, try some things. I'm setting up an audio uh, recording system here at home. So uh, for voiceovers, narrations, or whatever else might come by, maybe it'll be audio books, or maybe I'll just plug my guitar in and a microphone and I'll just uh, sing songs for a little while. Uh, anybody else have any other questions? How have we been going here? Oh, look, I've been going for a half an hour. Can't believe I yacked for half an hour and not a single commercial break. It's kind of weird. Uh, I'll tell you what, we'll give it a few more moments. I think I've covered pretty much everything that I was interested in, in covering. But again, I'd be more than happy if you have anything more that you want to say or that you want me to expand on, I'd be more than happy to do so. The basic bottom lines, know what you're looking for. And if you don't know what you're looking for, at least question what you're finding, right? Uh, look forward to hearing more.
guitar. Oh, well, thank you. Very nice. This is awesome. Yes, to the guitar session as well. You've never heard it, have you? Wow. Uh, but that's uh, partially how I stay sane at the same time. So I'll tell you what, uh, any more? I'll give you, give you 15 seconds. Thank you. It was very nice to be uh, having an opportunity to chat with everybody too. And uh, I was going to do this uh, with a whiskey in hand. So a little inside story that uh, most people don't know. Uh, throughout my time at CTV, I would often on a Friday, I wouldn't do it every day, but on a Friday, I would get a, a little shot glass of, of scotch and take it into the, uh, to the studio. And I would usually, after I got through the first half hour, because that's where the more serious stuff was, then I'd start sipping on. Or if I didn't bring one in, uh, my producer at the time was uh, Rob Williams, who's doing CTV Morning Live now, but he used to produce the six o'clock newscast. So if I'd forgotten to bring one, he would just yell, Robbie, Scotch, stat. Kind of obnoxious, but it was still fun. <laughs> and Robbie would bring me a whiskey and I'd finish it off on a Friday. So uh, this is not a Friday, this is a Monday, but we are afternoon. So I think maybe after this, I'll just uh, have a wee dram. Indeed, maybe uh, you have one too. Not too many though. We still have to stay in reality, right? All right. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed, or at least I hope you enjoyed. And if you didn't, well, fire me a note and uh, tell me why. Oh, you can send it through the Creative Hive as well. And I know they have another one tomorrow. I didn't double check the schedule for tomorrow, but I'm sure if you check the Creative Hive website. Uh, again, when I was talking to Des about this, everything that they've done as they set up their business was about community. So I love community and the fact that everything they do is wrapped around that. It's nice to be part of this online community and this uh, social media. What's my favorite scotch? Um, I have a lot of favorites. I got a lot of them uh, on my departure from uh, CTV. I still like, uh, there's a Bullmore 15 that is awesome. The 15 year old is actually very, very good. Uh, probably my favorite is uh, Dalmore Cigar Malt. Although I got a couple from Scotland because we went to Scotland last summer. And those are pretty good too. So all of them, I guess you could say that. Uh, anything? No, cheers. Okay, perfect. Thank you guys so much. This has been fun and uh, watch the next one tomorrow.